<laughs> All right, so Nollywood tradition is one we uphold every Tuesday on the show. And we have an amazing show planned for you, all laced with an array of good music. Yes, and with Monday out of the way, Tuesday will sure be easy peasy as we are here to be a part of it. Now, it is positive vibes all the way to 2 p.m., guys. Yes. yes, on that note, we say welcome to the show. You all know that the show is always incomplete without you. Yes, you can buzz us on Twitter, Facebook, and of course on Instagram. And you can watch us from any part of the globe. And do call in to be part of the show. It's free like that. Yes, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, this is Ryan S. This Flyness. I go by the name King OJ. Well, you can call me OJ. That's where it is. It, it is, is what it is. is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's your girlfriend next door. It's the host with the most. So it's the Joe in the Crown. My name is Honey Potts. Yes, or HP for short. Sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it is your girl, Amanda Dara. And today you can call me Mandy. Yes. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, on today's episode of the Entertainment Splash, we have as usual entertainment news we have celebrity birthday shout out and a quick history lesson of entertainment history on rewind don't forget to tweet bill where oj will take us all the weird and crazy moments on social media after which we'll be taking a look at the new living in bondage film that has got many talking now honey Potts was at the premiere looking like a beautiful demon <laughs> and you find out about that shortly as we'll be taking a look at some of the looks from the premiere who hit it and who missed it so stick around for that <laughs> and it will be time to rant on the truth of segment after which a recap on all you might have missed in the news will surface then finally OG and Amanda will bring us some movie talk on the movies other movies segment after which we'll wrap things up with where are they now yes sir very correct we hit things running it's time for the <laughs> entertainment news and of course first off Yinka Ifele speaks on Aiden in the birth of his triplets yes Nigerian gospel musician Yinka Ifele has opened up on why he hid and denied the birth of his triplets he made this known during an interview with Vanguard newspaper where he stated that he initially denied the report because the babies were delivered prematurely. He said, and I quote, so I was afraid to broadcast. I did not want to lose them after the long wait. And according to a Yoruba adage that says, if you broadcast a child, you might lose the child. So I decided to keep it within the family until they were fully grown and healthy. That is why I denied it when the news got out. But my partner told me not to be afraid that God who gave the kids will surely protect them and that was when I came out to tell people. I was initially afraid of how they looked very tiny. Thank God today they are big. Aww. If further continued saying, and I quote, it was hard to keep it a secret. A lot of colleagues in the media knew about it, but I told them to hold on till the right time to broadcast it. I tried as much as I could to keep the news from getting out. I did not release any of their pictures. Yes, Ian Kaifele welcomed a set of triplets, two boys and a girl in January 2019 at Holy Cross Hospital in the USA after 22 years of marriage, wow. guys. I mean, this is, uh, I'm very happy for him. And I actually think it was a good decision that he kept it private. It might seem superstitious initially, but yeah. when you look at the condition at which, you know, they came into being 22 years of marriage prematurely, uh, you I mean, as a Nigerian, no, I don't totally rule out that spiritual angle. I don't know <laughs> about any other person, but I'm with him for keeping it till now, even though, as the wife said, you know, God is in control of every of these things. And some people might feel like, oh, it's not a big deal. But, I mean, do what makes yeah. you they, feel safe. They really, they really tried for the child to have been born since, the children to have been born since January. Yeah. And the news broke in July. They tried. True. They That's tried. very yeah. true. And the it was even, we didn't know it was twins, yeah. it was triplets. And he denied it first. Wow. <laughs> mm. What do you have to say about this? I totally agree with The Amanda. normal Nigerian factor, African factor, you mm. have to hide totally things. Have, especially with the fact that, you know, they have gone through a lot. Yeah, yeah, 20 and, years. Uh, you know, you wouldn't even blame them for this. Different strokes for different folks. And some people feel that when they keep things under the wraps, that it works out well for them. And some people can just go ahead telling people about, you know, all they are yeah. doing at the moment and it, nothing still happens to them. It's just the same way we talk about weddings and some people would say that, you know, they're not going to make noise and some people will have, you know, so the society wedding, wedding yeah. and all that. Nothing will happen to them, but some people would make the noise yeah. and something will still happen to them. So I think it's just understanding yourself and what works for you. I agree completely. All right, yeah. massive well, congratulations, congratulations to yes. them. <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> all right, so Michael Jackson becomes the 
highest earning dead celebrity. The late king of pop, Michael Jackson, has topped this year's Forbes list of highest earning diseased celebrities. According to Forbes, Michael Jackson is taking the top spot for the seventh year in a row after his estate made over $60 million in the last 12 months. Other dead celebrities on the list include Elvis Presley at the number two spot with $39 million. Charles Schultz at number three with $38 million. And Old Palmer at number four with $30 million. And Bob Marley at number five with $20 million. Others on the list include Dr. Seuss, John Lennon, Marilyn Monroe, Prince Nipsey, Hustle, Excitation, Whitney Houston, and George Harrison. So mm -hmm. what do you say to this? Like even <sighs> dead, some people are cashing out. Yeah. And, and the top mm -hmm. five, the top five, there's a um, cartoonist there, mm -hmm. and there's a golfer oh, there, wow. but the list is filled up with more musicians. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this during, um, when we are talking about the R. Kelly story, that the royalties that these people make, even when they are dead, they are still cashing out because people play their but songs. There's a structure yes, in the there's music a structure industry, there. You know? It's amazing. It's and amazing. it's one thing that I think Michael Jackson was really fighting for, even when he was alive, because I know that last year he made about four hundred million dollars because he sold uh, because of his sale of the uh, his part of the shares yeah. in Sony. He sold yeah, it back yeah, to yeah. Sony. Yeah, but this that. year he made about sixty million dollars. So it's a legacy that he really fought for, and some would say it was part of the reasons why you know he <laughs> whether he died accidentally or whatever I did. There's yeah, so many speculations yeah, around his death. And it's just very sad that, you know, he's not here to see his legacy living on. And even when people try and clum, come at him with all the bad, you know, mm -hmm. news and try and spoil his image, you still recognize Michael Jackson as being... The legend. The legend. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it is one thing we should emulate in this part of the world because I think the only person who enjoys that, and I'm not saying in, uh, um, as a whole, is Fela. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, because, you know, I think some royalties still go yeah, to, yeah. you know, the family. Uh, and then they were talking about, so I went to his museum and I saw, you know, the way he died in bed and everything is clothes. And uh, the person who was showing me around was saying that uh, if he even knew, even his clothes then should have been so that these days when you I'm just, sure off, you clothes, know, money yeah. is coming in and all that. Uh, and uh, again, I know that people outside the country respect us because there was a particular time like that. I think him. Um, it was um, Alari who said that. He received royalty. They played his song somewhere outside the country and he received maybe Rocketman or Alari or one of them. I heard something like that. Mm. So if they respect us so well like that and they still put their own stuff in, you know, in intact yeah. and mm -hmm. they're paying you, they're reaching out to you once they use your music, I think so we should think you know, about I think it. it so as I said, the system is in place. As long as you're in the system, if you're putting your music outside of their system, they can't really help you with that. And I feel like Mr. Easy is one person that is really making mm. his uh, music business and doing it the right way. Mm -hmm. If you're doing it the right way, then definitely you have to pay for royalties. It's just a system, mm -hmm. which is why we're always talking about reading your contracts and getting yeah, into true good that. legal true deals. True. It's something that, you know, the younger musicians, celebrities, even people in the industry generally, if you have a talent, protect that talent. True that, true that. Yeah. I'm still talking about this list. Um, I'm happy for Nipsey Hussle. Yes. And of course, yes. XSS Tentacion. Um, yes. Those guys that just died, rappers, hip hop guys. And of course, oh. they're making the list of 13, wow. 13 lists. 13. Look at them, young. Yeah, so and great. I mean, well, at great. least their legacy lives on. Definitely. Yeah. All right, moving on to some more news. Lionheart is disqualified from Oscars 2020. Now, when it was revealed in October that the Nigerian's Oscar Selection Committee, NOSC, had picked Genevieve Naji as Lionheart's film as Nigeria's submission to the best international feature film category of the 2020 Oscars, many Nigerians were super excited. Unfortunately, that excitement has been cut short as Lionheart has been disqualified from the Oscar 2020 race for having too much English dialogue. Now, the movie, which is Nigeria's first ever submission to the Academy Awards, was submitted for the International Feature Film category. And the Academy's description of an international feature film is, and I'm quoting, a feature-length motion picture defined as over 40 minutes produced outside the United States of America with a predominantly non-English dialogue truck.
track. Now, Lionheart does not meet the criteria as the film has just under 12 minutes of dialogue that is in the Igbo language native to southeastern Nigeria, while the remaining 94 minutes is in English. Now, Genevieve Naji, who directed and stars in the film, was not pleased with the disqualification and took to Twitter to express her feelings. Now, she wrote, and I'm quoting, I am the director of Lionheart, and this movie represents the way we speak as Nigerians. This includes English, which acts as a bridge between the 500 plus languages spoken in a country, therefore making us hashtag One Nigeria. It is no different to how French connects communities in the former French colonies, and we did not choose who colonized us. Now, as ever, the film, and many like it, is proudly Nigerian. And obviously, she's very displeased with this one, but what do you guys think about it? Yeah, Genevieve's tweet were in response to Avers Dunave, um, the American the filmmaker director. who directed the next place drama miniseries When They See Us. Ava Duvane was one of the many who were displeased with the news of the disqualification and had expressed it by tweeting, and I quote, to at the Academy, you disqualified Nigeria's first ever submission for best international feature film um, because it's in English. But English is the official language of Nigeria. Are you mm. barring this country from ever competing for an Oscar in its official language? The, the Nigerian Oscar Selection Committee, NOSC chairperson Chineze Ayane, in a recent statement, urged filmmakers to shoot with the intention of non-English recording dialogue as a key qualifying parameter to represent the country in the most prestigious award. He also revealed that the committee is working towards organizing workshops and seminars to create robust awareness on the guidelines and requirements for an international feature film entry. Wow. So this is just a whole lot of drama. Okay. They made the mistake from beginning. So there are rules. Yes. If there are rules, then it was not even supposed to be nominated in the first in place. In the first place. Um, if you think that you're not yeah. okay with the language that you have spoken or it does not go with the rules that you have. Uh, but then, um, you know, I, I like what uh, the director said, um, saying that, you know, are you saying that in time to come, you're not going to be, uh, you know, considering Nigeria? So... Uh, because, uh, you know, and English is the lingua the franca official, here yeah. in Nigeria. Uh, and uh, they spoke other languages there. So I am actually really wondering if uh, they can actually still put thoughts together so the, and so, do the needful. So the rules for that particular category, it's non-English. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So I blame the NOSC. At least 40 minutes yes, of I blame the NOSC for even nominating it. For even pushing it that far. Mm. Because you've seen the guidance No, already. but they said, according to them, it wasn't vetted like by the community. The, the committee? Yes, the committee. It wasn't vetted by them until much later when they found out that it's just 40 minutes <sighs> of the film that was not in English. But like you just raised our hope as, and just crashed everything, yeah, man. But here's the thing, right? Like, we were just talking earlier about a system. Now, in, I mean, on our own ends, it's sad for us because we're super excited about this one. It was a big one for Nigeria, a big representation for us. But the system is a system. Should they bend the system for us? No. Never so that. that is why I, that. I would not be in line with, you know, the narrative of, oh, this is our official language. Is they're not trying is to, um, you know, they're trying to mess with us or they're trying to, like, look wrong? down on at us because we're Nigerians. I don't want to follow no. that narrative because Never. I don't think it's true, quite frankly. And I feel like we should just you know, learn from it and try to do better. Because we, Lion has is obviously a very good film. It doesn't take away yeah. from how good the film was. Yeah, that, that, that's a narrative I want every um, filmmaker, the movie people should understand. Look at what music is doing right now. Those, they are the one farms in us, music-wise. <laughs> so we have, we have a whole lot of content. Yeah, that's to, true. We have a lot of content to push so out there. Uh, we have well, history. We have... I, I think that there are different sides to this. I mean, and one interesting side to it is that we should embrace our own local languages, yes. our yes. dialect, our mother tongue. We should speak it often. We should not allow all this go into extinction because True if that. you're saying in other times that see we want the one that it's is indigenous feature, yes you know Give and then pure. we are here considering people who are living here and don't even understand their own language mm. and because english is our official language i mean this is what you're not finding in china japan India. and all of these places mm -hmm. they are so proud you speak to a french man he understands english but he will give you back. not mm -hmm. respond mm -hmm. to you in english yes but then again genevieve had a very strong point when she said this is a country that speaks over 500 languages you know she also didn't really want to play that um culture card because if she was an evil speaking movie perhaps she wouldn't have had the yoruba yeah. market maybe she wouldn't have had the Hausa market yeah. and yeah. people who yeah, don't even that. understand true english that. maybe the english market as well she was trying to make it as international as possible so perhaps 
she was, Elizabeth. you know, submitting the film for the wrong category. Yes, exactly. Maybe that exactly. is what is exactly. going on here exactly. because she also must have thought of it. I'm, I'm pretty sure that it would, it wouldn't have been so hard to have make that film yeah. predominantly in Igbo. But that. would you have watched it? Yes. Yes, it's Genevieve Unagi. Yeah. And of course, I, I think other, all, all our other filmmakers should look into this. But we have a whole lot of Yoruba films that speak Yoruba throughout Igbo movies. That is very true. So, to yeah, just true. go in production-wise and you can discuss. And as you have said, I've seen Yoruba movies and they try to speak English. I don't ever understand it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. That's another thing. Ah, uh, this <laughs> table. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the thing is, yeah, you say I'm shading. You can call it anything. Yeah. I'm just saying that if you're going to speak Yoruba, speak it strictly. I don't agree impress, with you. Don't, don't try to impress me and then you mess up. Don't. You love you <laughs> speak English and you're not speaking well. Oh, wow. <laughs> on that note, it's a wrap on entertainment news. It is now time for celebrity birthday shout out. Yay. Now, celebrating today are the following people. Oh, Our very own uh -huh. presenter, uh -huh. sophisticated hustler. Uh -huh. You know, and she calls herself the one with the dimples. Uh -huh. Of course, I'm talking about Arike. <laughs> the dimple, she's a year older today. We're Happy super birthday. excited about that. How old is Arike, by the way? How old is okay. she? Yeah, all band now. <laughs> Let's tell us. Are you not the... Let's not say anything. Arike right now is busy. boyfriend. I'll be his splash boyfriend. <laughs> Arike is busy right now, chilling in Dubai, Dubai. <laughs> yeah, enjoying she's herself. chilling, enjoying See, herself. See, Arike, you're and... watching this clip. We'll cut this clip and we'll show you. Mm -hmm. If you come back to Nigeria and you don't bring anything, you see what we'll do to you. Arike, we want to happy wish birthday. you a happy birthday. <laughs> we want to we may say that this is going to be your best year yet. We Preach. love you so much. Uh -huh. We like the energy that you bring on the show. We're well, your mm -hmm. fans, basically. Oh, she let yeah. them know. Arike, steady killing us. Dodo, I mean, ah, well, well, that thing you always add in. Fires! <laughs> because we're your egg. You can just even roast us briefly because we're your yam as well also. That's, by the way, <laughs> celebrating today is also one of Hollywood's most popular momager's American television personality producer, businesswoman, and author. I'm talking about Chris Jenner. Happy she turned birthday. 64 today. We need to we amazing need to, woman. I need to clap for this woman. Yes, this Honestly. woman is powerful. Huh? For anything, she is powerful. Huh. I uh, love our entrepreneurial spirit. skills. Uh, yes. I love our the way she brings out you and the way they think that they can make money out of so yes, many things. Everything. I mean, if you have this woman in your life, you're mate Cash forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look you're at mate Kylie, forever. look at Kendall, yes. look at everybody, even you're the mate. younger ones. Like, oh, and I feel like it's because she was able to spend time with her children to understand their personalities and be able to, you know, where you have a very play in an honest relationship with your children. It's very good. She's a fantastic woman. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're wishing her a happy birthday. It's also happy happy birthday. Tape, by the way. Uh, wow. <clears throat> now, we also have Nigerian <laughs> rapper, 2007, most beautiful girl in Nigeria, and actress Munachi Abi turning 32 today. What? I mean, look at Munachi. She looks so good. And we're wishing her the best today on her birthday. And of course, happy birthday to you and everyone else celebrating today. Happy happy birthday. Birthday shout out. You do? Munachi okay. Girl, I saw her in Living in Bondi. And she, Amazing. she killed she, it. She, she acted well. That's yeah. nice. Okay. You Happy have a special shout out. Happy birthday, Okwe Major. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday, Okwe. Okwe, uh -huh. happy One birthday. One of the producers for your view. Mm. Okwe, we love you. Please. Aww. We must turn up today. Yeah. You your voice went down. That, so we that love you, Pat. You, you were really quick. Guy, you can't guy. be slower. It's just guy, a, guy. No, it's just an African <laughs> man. It's just bush like we that. Love I don't know. We love you. We love you, though. We love you. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you for everything you've been doing so far. Happy birthday to you. Make sure you have a good time today. We That's turn up it. today. Yeah. <laughs> you think we're going for evening mass in the... No, if I don't try also. <laughs> okay, guys, it's time for Tweetville. This is Tweetville, in case you're wondering, where we'll bring you all the savagery, humor, and crazy moments on social media. Are you guys ready for this? Yes. You heard the whistle. Yeah. <laughs> so let's do this. So Mrs. Goliath put up this post, and she says, our birthday in 26 days. So this is herself, and of course, maybe her boyfriend, or mm, no, no, this one's baby not his daddy, boyfriend. his mm -mm. boyfriend, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> the monitoring spirit now replied this picture. You see the guy is hiding his face. Mm. Mm -hmm. Monitoring spirit now replied and said, only legend will understand this guy's post, I stand. So legends like us. She's gonna ask some questions. So what, what, what do you think the boy is doing? She, I don't even know what she. So the she, thing she is, she needs to ask that. Who are we? What are we questioning? I don't. Yes, <laughs> I. I, 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 I am saying it again. People should understand uh, the relationship they are in. Because if you're dating somebody and the person is it's not, not dating you, it's not dating you. <laughs> so you, you can't. You can only force a 
horse to the river. You can't force the horse to drink water, I totally, right? I totally disagree. Mm. What if, if this boy is like me and many of us out there that don't like taking pictures? It's not that I'm, I just want to hide King. my face or I don't, want, I don't want people to know that we are together, but I don't just like taking my pictures. My darlings, please do not listen to OJ. <laughs> I mean, don't listen if anybody to does this to you. Just stop it already. <laughs> know in your mind that you don't have a boyfriend. As it is good to just be alone. Yourself. Be yourself's friend. Do you understand? <laughs> Buy the things you find interesting in the house. Watch TV, subscribe hmm. to anywhere you want to subscribe, enjoy yourself. You but, don't get it. Took I see life it, is not hard at all. It's still here in the picture now. You what? can see his beards now. You know this is cool now. So why are you? Oh my right. God. I said you guys are fun. <laughs> can we just move already? Well, I'll give you the scope. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just move on. So somebody puts up this tweet and it says, It's I am chewing gum, not I am chewing, chewing gum. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even believe that people make this mistake. No, uh, uh like it's it, there's some Nigerian English that's you know it's just it, you grow it up. Flows like it that, just flows like that. Because like you have that, to man. say it. You have to say it. I am I chewing chewing gum so that it makes sense. Gum. Chewing. You can say you are chewing gum. They'll think you are chewing gum. The gum that, that exactly. The way you pronounce the chewing gum, uh -huh. it does not even come like chewing. Uh -huh. So exactly. you now say that chew mm -hmm. chewing gum. gum so that you understand. See, me for this thing. It's that's just like I am eating popcorn. You know, same thing. <laughs> I, you know, how many put you here saying I'm eating popcorn? popcorn. No, it's oh, not. that one is even yeah, like pronunciation something. This one is like tautology, like a <laughs> chewing, chewing, chewing gum. gum. <laughs> Reverse back. <laughs> oh, wow. Just Mika. No, that one we used to mess up. We mess up a lot. So somebody put up this tweet, and this is a, if, um, a picture of Zlatan Ibile looking confused. And he says, Sir, I'm sorry, I forgot to write my matric number on my answer booklet. And the vigilator, the vigilator replied, Mafo, you write it next year. Now, wow. And mm. I don't understand why lecturers like, are this just, You see it's why just this thing brings bad memory right Honestly. now to me. Honestly. <laughs> Should I share? I mean, this, I mean, yeah. this that you've just What's his said name, Seth? What's so, his name? So it wasn't even mm. that I did not even... <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even that I did not write my matric number. It was my year one. And see, I felt terrible. And, you know, it was the foundation for the whole... Yeah, true. You know, yeah, true. Yeah. Years I spent in the university. So I wrote my matric number and the person after me wrote, made it's a mistake same. and wrote my own matric number. So they stepped down the two yeah. and later in math this has happened own, to me before in math own, we checked the results saw his results i did not see my results i went back this was when we had resumed and then he now told me that he set it down because he saw two hey. and that person that made the mistake did not carry over i had a carryover yeah, wow. i'm not even joking and um, this is dramatic as that i had to like take it and then i did not have practical in my own time <sighs> i had to do practical in there i was ashamed like this Funny, I was but sorry class. need a okay. hug Sorry. What's, what's lecture? But really, honestly, all the lecturers. Dr. Falabi. Dr. Wow. Falabi. Wow. Look really? at Tony Potts My now. My surname. Dr. Falabi, look at Tony Potts now. As in bad memory. Like, I can't. <laughs> lecturers need to stop doing it. I mean, you, you might have the power now, but you don't yeah. know who will be tomorrow. I'm telling you. I mean, look at bad. David Doe. Look at Amanda Dara. So, eh? look at Tony Potts. <laughs> look at Chris Daniel. Good, uh, exactly. Chris yeah. Daniel just had to enter. <laughs> Okay, so this person put up this person and said, his wife just called to his job site and left a message. Oh, this is the message she left. Tell my husband he forgot his phone at home and it's not locked. <laughs> this is the husband like, yeah, I am. <laughs> but there's nothing inside that phone now. No, no, no. What, this, what, this what, what do you think she's dying? Because, because his phone is unlocked. And the wife... First off, she's about to see all the side chicks. Second off, she's about to see his bank accounts. You know, it's probably the hey line about God, that. God. And all the places he has been going to with friends, she's hey going to know today. God, it's, God, a, it's, God. A, it's a truth telling session. Did the you truth, see that yeah. video that that mm. man ran out of the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> he said he needs to the towels because of phone. So be like people like us. Be honest. We don't have anything to hide. No, don't have nothing I'm to not hide. Sure you don't have anything to hide. There's nothing to hide. Do you password your phone? No, it's open. I'm an you open. password no, no, your no, phone. No, no, let me, you let me, phone. no, no, no. OJ, I know. Uh, I said OJ. Honeypot. I know people like OJ. People like OJ. You catch them. Uh, you not say, uh huh. Are we married? That's my sister that sends me message now. Nah. Can married? my sister call me love? No, 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 no. Are we married? Uh, I mean, we're still single. Can you Can't imagine? we flip? Some now, guys wow. will tell you how they are it's cheating confident. See. <laughs> mm -hmm. Shame on you. We're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's continue with our tweet, Bill. And somebody put up this post and it says, let's break up. And me just went like, okay. And she says, just like that. And he said, uh-uh. Oh, yeah, let's share the grace now. You said, let's break up. And I said, okay, so what's the problem? What's just like that? 
<laughs> is there anything I'm supposed to say? She Am I supposed to say? Uh -uh, You're supposed baby, to calm ask down now. Why? You see, you don't understand women English. You, 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 like, you don't understand how women communicate. Let's break up means that there's a problem and I don't like so it. Discuss. So we should discuss. Let's talk about why we have to so break I up. And you need what, to also Amanda. beg me. Amanda, uh -uh. so I tell you again that these guys are very funny. They would not open their mouth to tell you that they are not doing it again. So they will frustrate you and then you will come and so say to scope. them that let's break up. And yeah. so he's ready. Okay. And if you will not be like, okay. okay. We'll move on to Jessica. Can you imagine? After Jessica, we'll go to Formula O. Okay, I, I think I'm done. <laughs> hey. I'm done. Don't I'm, be like Kingoju. No, I'm not that guy. Be a good person. I'm not that guy. Really. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, that's all that we can take on Tweetville this afternoon. We'll return more after this timeout, so stay with us. <laughs> Yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. Welcome back to the second half of the show. So far we've brought you entertainment news, Tweetville, and now it's time to chew it up in a minute or less. One of us will vent on what's bothering him or her. It's me. I have a problem with Nigerian banks and POS. <laughs> yes, let's not even talk about the 15 that people are collecting now. Yeah, at 12 which, stations. Yes, mm. and I was, I said, why? <laughs> so they showed me the sign. I said, okay, let's leave that conversation. So recently, I, I made a transaction using my POS and they deducted, it declined, mm -hmm. but they deducted my money from my account. Mm. Okay, oh God, give me my money now. They've removed the money, but it's the, the, the card was declined, but they removed my money. Mm -hmm. You now told me I should wait for seven days before wow. they can refund my money. So in a situation like that, if that was the only cash I had, or I was traveling, so I'm meant to be stranded for seven days, seven working <sighs> days. I know, I know it's crazy. I remember in those days where, by, where your ATM will get trapped in the ATM yeah, machine. Yeah. They will tell you, go to the headquarters. Whereas the machine <laughs> is just right here in this yeah, building that you can just open and, but now it's better now for ATM mm. that you can, when yeah, the ATM but swallows you your card. if you don't use the bank's ATM. Yeah. It will be a long they, journey. No, they're, they're going to destroy it. You're going to collect another one from They you. will not collect money from me for that card. Nice one. So I had to wait seven <laughs> days. Yeah. I know we'll get there someday. I don't know why I'm waiting for seven working days for a transaction that was declined and you removed my money. Mm. Dear <laughs> banks, dear Nigerian banks, please, Fear God. <laughs> Fear better. God. Yeah. And this Do one better. is really smart. I mean, Honestly. Yeah, because I've had a lot of experience. I've had this experience. I've had another experience that I withdrew money. Uh, I went to a doctor, I withdrew money at um, a particular bank, and then, you know, he did not give me money, but of course, <laughs> the he deducted my. I got this money because it wasn't the bank that I use, that That's I use the ATM. That's where the I said it was like seven months or the following no year. No way. May, so the problem, Did you say the, seven months? And guess what? I was always going there. I want to see the general. I want to see. So one no. day my staff followed me and said, so you're still being nice. I mean, you so just enter you the for them. And then you start. <laughs> and that's the problem up. I have. Why must you wait till we get to, to that level it. where to you're very everything. upset and you're making noise and you're talking about And everybody is looking at you as if you're not normal. No, so, so I, I, was, better, I was telling honestly. the customer care. So if I didn't have any money to, to, to cope for that one week, how do I do it? We need to that you're telling better. me to wait for seven working days, a transaction that you people just... It's a cashless economy, yeah. so you have to understand that nobody's having uh, cash with yeah. them. We so if you are, better. especially with the card situation, you just... Okay. Uh, okay. Anyway, it's getting back. better. Let me go back to my post. <laughs> 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 Anyways, moving on, it's time for a quick recap of the entertainment news. And of course, first up, we talked about Yinka Ayefele speaking on hiding the birth of his triplets. Yeah, and we told you Michael Jackson becomes uh, the highest earning dead celebrity. Yes, and then we told you why Lionheart was disqualified from Oscar's 2020 race. Sad one there. Mm. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, Living in Bondage will take a break. And when we come back, we'll probably show you the premiere of Living in Bondage. So just keep it here with us. Yes, sir, we are back. Yes, I talked about Living in Bondage. Yes, Living in Bondage, Breaking Free, premiered over the weekend, and only Pot was on ground to get the scoop and see it before the rest of us, which I'm not happy about. <laughs> yeah, so let's take a look at what went down at that premiere. Hey, guys, 
so you wonder why I look like this, right? I'm going to be telling you in a bit. So tonight we are out and about again, and tonight we are at a film house, IMAX Cinema Lecky, for the premiere of the sequel to the 1992 blockbuster Living in Bondage, that is Living in Bondage Breaking Free. Not free, my boy. Okay, tonight we are going to be enjoying, we're going to be watching the movie and we're going to be talking to people. Also, we are going to be finding out if the sequel is a game changer and will be paving way for how sequels should be treated and executed in Nollywood moving forward. My name is Honeypot. Come with me. school is the new school that is what is happening ah look at this woman do you recognize her yeah. this is merit yeah. in living in bondage yeah. yes. this is the yeah. world merit so like how you know i was saying a mixture of the old and the new is the new nollywood we have to work together we have to leave what we have behind they will pick it up and they'll transfer it to the next generation what have you done Nancy? I'm Mary from Living in Bondage and his wife. I'm looking for I'm looking for the best because they added a combination of old and new wine, so I'm expecting nothing short of greatness tonight. My character is Obin Omego. Um, that's uh, KOK's son, uh, Chief Omego. So this story is uh, focused. We display wealth and affluence in our own time, contemporary days, and then the consequences of our choices. You are in grave danger. And a minute, they start to inch close. I played, I played Toby Worre um, in this sequel, Living the Bondage sequel. So look out for Toby Worre in the sequel. Well, I need them to blow my mind. In the words of David and Chris Brown, blow my mind. You know, like I saw it when I was a kid. That's why the first, the first sequel came out. The first part came out in '92, right? Yeah. And I mean, I was definitely about like three, four years old back then. And I now watch my other ones. And I'm sure I'm looking forward to, for, to them blowing my mind again. Growing up, we always wanted more. You felt you were never really where you are meant to be. Come on, we go. Look at this life. Do you want this life? And I can give it to you. Everything. There's no doubt that living in bondage was a masterpiece. And for um, Ramsey to want to revisit the past, to create a better picture of what living in bondage was, and making it better for, to, for us to see today is a lot of a cause. I saw the trailer. It's nothing short of, um, it looks really good. Um, so yeah, the same feeling I had seen the trailer, I'm hoping that we having the same feeling seeing the film. Um, it's fast paced, I'm good, great acting, of course he had a lot of veterans. It brought back childhood memories. So I, I like that nostalgic feeling and I, I want to feel it tonight in the cinemas. Anime right now, one in the fifth million, I swear to God, one to Baba. It must have been a tall order for him to act and direct and I didn't want the antagonist to die. I'm not going to get let off a lot of things but trust me it's a film you have to see. I am so glad Ramsey put all the work in to make sure it's not a letdown because Living in Bondage is actually a, a classic so it will be like if he didn't do his job well and so he did it well so I'm so proud I'm so so happy. But it's amazing that um, it just reminds me of the power of story, which is what brought Nollywood to the table in the first place. So um, it's a historical Nollywood film, and this is also historical because this is like our first official, you know, sequel, like remake. First things first, I honestly can't wait to see the movie. I saw it in 1992. I think I was about 11 or so. And then I remember that it was quite lengthy because it was part one and two, two hours, 45 minutes. I was like, why is it that long? And it was scary. Soundtrack was scary. The theme song was scary. Are you kidding me? And then Kenneth Okong. And then he was like, 
subject matter that people do not talk about. At that point, he felt amazing. Come on, we go. Look at this life. Do you want this life? And I can give it to you. Everything. All righty, so we have come to the end of the movie premiere. I mean, the sequel to the 1992 blockbuster, Living in Bondage, a Breaking Free. Now, it's time for me to say my BYE. Thank you so much for staying here with us. My name is Honeypot. I'll catch you. Honeypot, you sly. You yes. watch Living in Bondage. She enjoyed herself. See how I look like a witch? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you look like a demon. Demons. In diamonds. <laughs> That's so that is name. true to theme. So well done. <laughs> it was inside of you all this way. And at the end, after three hours of sitting down in that three cinema, hours, my heart was I had already my heart was nowhere to be found. I lost my heart right then. So I was looking for so doing the was outro it, like was it that interesting to be sitting down for three uh, hours? So the thing is, initially I don't know, maybe because before I left the red carpet for the cinema. Uh, the whole place was already filled up, so I couldn't mm. even find anywhere oh, to okay. sit at first. So at the end of the day, I, I found somewhere to sit. So maybe because I was just so, at the beginning, I was like, mm, what was this? Oh, me. <laughs> and then I settled in. Mm. Oh my God, it captures your attention. Like, fantastic. You're just, it's fantastic. Flashy Three cars. hours, guys. Three hours. And you know, you said earlier that it was Ramsey Noah's first Thank uh, you. Yes. directorial debut. Yes, yeah, so fantastic. it is, uh, yeah, it is uh, Ramsey Noah's first time of directing. And uh, he did fantastically well because, I mean, it's so hard to believe that it is his first time. And the characters killed their roles. Like, they, and the, the way they blended the some of the, the old, old mm. Kenneth Okonkwo, Kenneth Okonkwo, uh, Bob Manuel, um, <laughs> hey. Kanayo, Kanayo. <laughs> Into it, and then the new uh, one. Like it, it's so, it was so effortless, oh, and it was so beautiful. Fantastic. And it has a beautiful lesson. So I'm not going to be giving people spoilers, spoilers. here, but I'll just be saying. Okay, but that who was like your favorite um, actor or actress? Who ah, killed wow. it for you? Mm. Can I actually peek? Because, you know, um, uh, the main character that is the young dude the new guy, from yeah. The New Guy, he acted really, really well. Mm. Munachi did well. I mean, all of them just killed their character. I must say that Ramsey Noir did a fantastic job. I must say, I mean, once again, and congratulations to all of them. Yeah. And I would say again that everybody should watch it. There is always a lesson to, to learn, learn from that, especially in this era that we have found ourselves. Yeah. That is, oh, everybody wants. <laughs> <laughs> to make money. Yeah, we are. Quick money. Fraud. Hmm. Be careful, hmm. no, because there are choices. They will give you choices. Yeah. But you know what? I won't say more than that. And, and, and I saw the character from the first Living in Bondage, just married to KK, looking all yeah, like. Did you see that? <laughs> because it's I watched it that year. Very time. scary movie. It's been a long time. Actually, a lot of people came out. In fact, I couldn't even. I mean, we can't use the whole day showing yeah, everybody we yeah. interviewed. Like, a lot of people came out for this premiere. I was so impressed. Super, super impressed. Fantastic. Honestly. That's All a right. good one. I All right, Terminator. it's time for Where Are They Now? Take a look to find out uh, which actor we are talking about today. It's Where Are They Now? Georgina Onoha. Georgina Onoha is one of the beautiful actresses who graced the Nigerian movie industry in the early 90s. I'm very sorry. See, the guy is just like, oh, he's a very good pal of mine. She decided to stay off the screen after her marriage. Sadly, her marriage crashed after 10 years and Georgina has been raising her two children. She later relocated to the U.S. to pursue a career in medical sciences and she bagged a master's degree in healthcare science. This lovely actress might have given up on her acting career, but she's definitely living her dreams and acquiring skills in the medical field. Now you know where they are now. All right, guys, we are back. It is to Entertainment Splash, and today has been packed. It is now time for Hit or Miss. Now, the long-awaited and highly anticipated Nollywood blockbuster Living in Bondage, Breaking Free, premiered on Saturday with Demons in Diamonds as the dress code of the event. Now, your favorite celebrities grace the red carpet, looking absolutely gorgeous and, of course, melodramatic because the theme gave all of them the opportunity to explore bold, fabulous and high fashion, you know, end. Now, joining me to talk about all the styles and trends that took over the red carpet, of course, is your girl, Honey Pot. Yes. The, the most, <laughs> the jewel in the crown. Are you, are you ready? Of I'm course, excited let's about do this, this one. Let's do this. Okay, let's, let's do, do this. this. Let's just start off. All right, the first person we're looking at is Anto. 
actually from Big Brother Niger, yes. yes. So I saw Anto and um, you know, in fact, for this, I don't know if I am just going to be a bit or oh, very nice because you see that uh, theme that it called, you, it could be anything like mm. demons and diamonds. <sighs> so, you know, you could just see anybody. So what she was wearing actually black all through mm -hmm. and um, well, it depicts darkness mm. and uh, you know, you just say that. To be honest, she killed, she killed it for it. me. She killed it. I mean, it. from the she headgear to the posing. Anto Leki is one person that, when she comes to an event, I'm looking forward to what she's, she's wearing. wearing. Yes, honestly speaking, she her body, I don't know, she just has a way of wearing the clothes. The clothes don't wear her. It's the other way oh, around. Wow. So for me, it's a definite big hit. Yeah. What about you? Hits. Hits from you too. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the next one at least is, yes. So Bolly Lama. Lama came in this uh, red stuff and then he had this lantern. The Odin, I mean, I can't say the Odin because some people still use this lantern and all that. So I felt it was very creative. I mean, I mean, maybe just bringing some light in and that's red and red uh, signifies danger. Mm. Like, uh, you know, uh, and you could associate red uh, with the... Uh, the devil too. I mean, <laughs> but it has white, and white is light. I don't know what you think about that wow. with the lantern. You, you, well, to be honest, it looks like a Yoruba demon. <laughs> first off, but I like the fact that he kept it true to his brand with the red cap. Yeah, and so the red cap. He looks like a demon, but I didn't see the diamonds. I, I didn't see the, the diamond. Maybe the, the white yeah. will not be the diamonds. But then for me, oh uh, wow, I'm just in. The, I, I wish we could just have something in the middle. I think I'm gonna go with a miss. Miss, I'm yes. Sorry. I love the, you, Bolly. Especially but, with the white. I I love Bali too, and I love the lantern. Mm. I love it. But then, like, bringing some light to darkness. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Next on our list is Dirile Edu. Um, I loved what Dirile yes. wore with the thing on his, across his mouth. Like, people were like, guess who's there? Who could have come here? He just, he was a showstopper at that event. Don't you think so too? Okay, so I recognize that it was Den really because there is no how, even if Den really wears Agbada, I would still know that it is Den really. I knew from the outset that it was Den really. I like what he's wearing or he was to the event. And I like the fact that, you know, that inner is actually like, okay, telling you that it's a diamond, so it's devil in diamond. So maybe the mask, uh, half mask, or will tell you that, mm. oh, that's the demon, but then, and the diamonds all around it. So for me, it is hit. Yeah, for me, it's a hit as well. I think they really killed the look totally, absolutely. Next on our list is Enyinya Wingi, and um, he showed up in all black. Yes, and, and he had a red contact lenses yes. and a beret. And uh, well, uh, he turned back, and at, uh, behind him, he has this, uh, like the devil uh, stuck to his back, that oh, stuff that he has. Really? The, the, the cape? The, the cape. Oh, nice. Yes. So, well, that's interesting for you to say because when I saw this picture, I kept thinking he had done this look before for other events, the beret and the, the stick. I think for the, the other one, that uh, had like a Gatsby, great, the great, great Gatsby, Gatsby theme. But he did and not do... even for his other movie where he's a general, um, Badamossi. Uh, Badamossi, yeah. So I'm starting to feel like I want something different from him because I feel like he has the body to carry carried off and I would like to see him you know, not in safe colors like black or white, but really exploring other colors, perhaps a red or something. Okay. I wish it was more from him. It's, it's mm, dicey. What about you? His so or I do not agree with you mm. um, because I saw him at uh, Great Gatsby, the theme, the, you know, movie that had the theme Great Gatsby. Mm -hmm. And I saw him here and I think it's a bit different. Yes, he can be wearing the beret and then you think that he wears beret. Maybe that is a style like Bolly Lomo. But now he has another, uh, you know, uh, jacket and uh, trouser inside and then he has this cape and behind the cape as I said there is a drawing and then he came with a stick it's all black devilish and uh, with the <laughs> so bear and then with his contact lenses it went all the way with the red contact lenses mm. so it's a hit for me hits for me, it's a miss. We're yes. not agreeing on this one <laughs> all right Idia Asian was also there what did you think about her look <sighs> oh, okay, so she wore this red overall on this, uh, yes, the inner. Um, yeah, the red depicts danger, as I said, uh, you know, and uh, it's devilish. And uh, he has a hood, 
Uh, <laughs> it's, looks, I think <laughs> I think Idia killed it. I, I think, think she killed it. She came in looking like a very sexy demon. To ah. be honest, she's one demon I wouldn't mind associating with. And she has this carriage with her. You mm. know, I liked the color of the, the hood that mm -hmm. she wore, especially with how she paired. It was very simple. It was... It was demon-like, yeah. and it also had that diamond, you know, thingy about it. So, so I like it. So it was a hit for me. I hit. I yeah. Hit, I hit. <laughs> then Ike was also there. Ike from Big Brother. Ike uh, Oyama. Yes. And um, this is what he wore. Uh, hmm. I am not impressed. Me neither. I just felt like he wore native yes. red and white. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know. He just woke up and felt, oh, this, like he just remembered. <laughs> and then he wore something and, and just started coming I mean, for the to movie. I mean, to, to be fair to him, sometimes it's very crazy when you have these themes and it's hard to stick with it. But like, um, I know, right? Yeah, well, I heard like, um, how many days to read? Yes. And then I had to think of what to wear. Mm. So you can imagine. So I understand. But I didn't then, see any demonic no, thing. He did not, no. he did not, he did not stick. make an effort. Mm -hmm. He did not make any effort so miss, at all. Miss so from it me? is Miss. From me. All right. Iniedo was there as well. Okay. Yes. And did you were you able to check out her outfits? Yes. Uh, it was a very glamorous outfit. You know, had a lot of glitter. And uh, I'm not sure if that's sequence. I can't really see it from there. But I thought it was a nice outfit. But yes, I, I, I thought it was a nice outfit for just you're going of. Uh, for a red carpet show that does not have like a, a theme, theme or maybe uh, another theme that is so sexy and all that because I can't see the demon. I can only yeah. see someone who's sexy yes. and has a nice dress. I totally agree with you on that. I think it was a nice dress, but it didn't just fit with the occasion. So it's a miss from me. And Honeypot, what's it for you? Miss. Miss, all right. <laughs> we had Nancy Sime as well. She was there at the event. I think she, she wasn't there, but um, she's always okay. Inse. Uh, so yes, we also so had Inse Ikpe Etim. And this is what she wore. So, uh, yeah, I spoke to her. I saw what she wore, the black, and then she had the fascinator uh, with the, I mean. Yeah. Hmm. So it had, I like the hairstyle. I like the hairstyle, and I liked what she was wearing. It was simple, you know, true to her character. I think she was very in line with her personality on this one. I thought it was simple, and I thought it was <laughs> demonic. As I, as, I, as I said earlier, I wish that there was, so, was something just in between, yeah. in between Heat and Miss. Maybe I would have put her in, in between. between. The, yeah, nah, I wish. But for now, what is it? Maybe it's, for me, it's a Miss, though. Miss. <laughs> and last miss. on our list <laughs> is Ramsey Noah. Hmm. The one who directed this film. And um, Rams Noah came in looking very corporate uh, in a suit and a white shirt and a tie. And I was wondering why he, you know, asked for that theme when he didn't keep to it. So I believe that there are organizers who take care of this. Mm. And mm -hmm. uh, what I, did, I mean, of course, a movie you directed, if we can go all the way, mm -hmm. I mean, looking for what to wear, especially the people even who are late and they still made an effort. Oh. He dressed like a gentleman. Exactly. He dressed Just like a gentleman. a gentleman or an angel or something. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe an angel. Well, maybe, and then he thought about his character and he felt that he did so much evil, like, you know. <laughs> Please, so it was a miss a for miss, me. Miss. I mean, I love Ramsey Noah. I'm very proud of what he has yeah. achieved. But why didn't you come up looking like a demon in diamonds? Oh, miss. wow. But that's it. <laughs> that's all we can take on hit or miss for today. Like, yes. Uh, so I'm looking at myself in this particular situation. I'm probably just still good there with jeans. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? I'm because I'm not that guy. Yeah, but wow. you should, people should not put me in hit or miss. Uh, I'm, I'm not happy with where I'm, you know, I did. Yes, you called for this movie. You called us to come watch your movie, and you gave us a theme, and you're just wearing suit and tie. Okay. Uh, what's that? Hmm. What? <laughs> I mean, is that well maybe he was too busy focusing on directing no you gave that. us you gave us the theme mm -hmm. i think i think maybe he was just not interested he's not just this thing and he's like okay let's just do this movie premiere and get it over yeah, with true. especially with the fact that sometimes people are overwhelmed but what, and what, what was your favorite look though um uh i don't have any really? I, th I think i like aina 
what he wore. Yes, yeah, I mean, with the contact I, lens, yes, looking I, I, like I, I, a bad yes. guy. I yes. like the contact lenses, though. Yes. Yeah, but I, my favorite was Anto, definitely. Yeah, Anto killed it. Anto killed it. Anto, Anto for me, too. Anto. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is where we draw the curtain right here. On the show, it's been two hours of non-stop fun. And, of course, I didn't do this alone, definitely. Mm -hmm. On the pods right here with me. And, of course, Amanda. And it's time for us to leave the building. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, my name is OJ. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Be at peace with yourself. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye. And happy birthday, Arika. Happy birthday, Arika.